All right, everybody, what's going on? And welcome to today's edition of Swag Talk, the show we cover the swag inside and out. I'm your tour guide around the swag, C. Wells, coming at you. And we are going to take a look back at week one. At week one. This is our week one recap. Um, not really going to spend a lot of time on any of these games because a lot of these games weren't close. But we're going to go ahead and put a bow on week one and, and get it on up out of here and get ready for week two. Uh, week two preview will be dropping on Wednesday. Um, also, probably later on this evening, um, we'll be dropping our picks for our, our week two pick them contest form. So, if you want to get in on that, that'll be on my uh, on my Twitter, which is uh, Swag Talk seventy six. I also be on my Facebook and Instagram, which are, which are both Swag Talk, and it'll be in the description of this video, um, so you can get down with that. We're calculating the scores from last from from week one. We're gonna put them all together. And uh, we're going to run this thing till after the Celebration Bowl. The winner wins the championship belt, which we are in the process of putting together. So y'all keep it locked here for that um, and, and and get down on this contest. Uh, also, Swag Smoke coming at you live on Thursday. We're back on Thursday. We took we took last Thursday off and did it on Wednesday so we could get all this week one action in. Uh, don't forget to like the video and um, comment your thoughts on week one. And don't forget, to, don't forget to hit hit that subscribe button. Um, if you have already, then thank you very much. If you haven't, man, go ahead and hit that, please, and thank you. Um, and also hit that notification bell so you can be alerted to anything that I drop uh, because we're going to be doing videos um, pretty much throughout the week, throughout the season. Uh, we'll be doing our HBCU Top 10 at some point. Um, aiming, for, aiming for tomorrow um, for that. So, you know, that'll be dropping uh, on, on days. During the during the season, so just keep it locked here. Keep the notification bell on to be alerted to anything. So let's go ahead and jump into this because there were a ton of games on on week one. I think it was like eleven games on the schedule. So we're gonna try to take a, a look at all of them. I'm not gonna go super in depth on on them because there's so many games, um, and a lot of these games were money games. So I don't need to really delve too deep into them. But we're gonna start off with the Thursday night games and the first game. Um, The first game that we have is Pine Bluff uh, taking on the Arkansas Razorbacks in Little Rock. And this game went, I guess you could say it went as expected. Arkansas won this game 70, 70 to nothing. Um, they led they led 56 to nothing at the half. Um, excuse me, they led 49 nothing at the half. And then they were able to score three more touchdowns and make this thing a total, total blowout. Uh, Pine Bluff just never really got off never really got off to a, a good start at all uh finished this game with only 10 first downs on the night um they they had seven total they had seven yards rushing on the night average point three yards per carry they finished with 123 passing yards uh, 11 to 23 on the night um no turnovers i guess if you want to find one good thing for pablo there were no turnovers for them um 130 yards of total offense 46 plays 2.8 yards per play they had five penalties for 35 yards they had more punting yards than they did total yards of offense uh nine punts for 292 yards average 32.4 yards per punt uh, arkansas did not punt in this game they finished with 687 yards of total offense average almost 10 yards per play uh they average they had a 408 yards through the air 279 on the ground eight and a half yards per carry eight rushing touchdowns uh, two passing touchdowns on the night, no turnovers for the Razorbacks either. Um, Pine Bluff was one of ten on third down, um, and no, I never got in the red zone. Uh, no sacks, no field goal attempts. N you know, really nothing, nothing much uh, good happened for them. Arkansas finished nine and nine on third down, seven of seven in the red zone. They had four sacks on the night. They were ten of ten on extra points. Uh, they didn't attempt a field goal. Uh, individually, Pine Bluff was, was led by Makai Higgins. He was 11 of 23 for 123 yards. Uh, with a long of 21, he was sacked four times. Uh, O'Shawn Ross led the team with 13 kick yards on five carries. Uh, he had a longer five. Jonas Davis had the longest run on the night for the Golden Lions with 11 yards was his longest run on the night. Um, Amani Roan. Finished with two catches for 34 yards. Uh, Giovanni Gibson had two catches for 32 yards. Christian Gamage, three for 21 
and uh, Donovan Giles had one for 21. Arkansas was led by uh, Taylor Green with 229 yards passing and two touchdowns. Uh, Jaquindon Jackson had eight carries for 101 yards and two touchdowns to pace the Razorbacks. Isaac Te Tesla had three catches for 53 yards. Pine Bluff was led by Jamarlin Green with seven tackles. Also, Kyle Volquay had seven tackles. Uh, Ash Ashoka Lake had uh, two tackles for loss for the Golden Lions. And like I said, just honestly, not a lot to really take from this game. I mean, you know, they were obviously overmatched. Uh, playing against an SEC opponent who really needs some positivity. And they, you know, they went out of their way to take care of business in this game. Uh, Pine Bluff, uh, back to the drawing board. They do face Arkansas Baptist this weekend um, at home in their home opener. So they, you know, have opportunity to put this game behind them and, and move forward. I mean, you know, it wasn't really a lot to take from this game. I think Pine Bluff had a couple of plays here and now, but just nothing – concrete and nothing really to get themselves going um our next game that we're gonna take a look at is all corn and uab um this game was actually a kind of entertaining game in, in spurts i think all corn defensively played you know they played decently at times um they did force a few turnovers uh they just couldn't really get anything going offensively blazers win this game 41 to 3 um they led by a uh, score of 28 to 3 at the half. They jumped out to a, a, a um, 14 0 lead before Alcorn got their field goal in the, in the first quarter. Uh, two more touchdowns from UAB in the second quarter. Like I said, made this a 28 to 3 halftime lead, and then they would score uh, three touchdowns in the. Um, they would get um, a field goal. They would get two field goals and a touchdown. In the four in the um in the second half to make the final margin forty one to thirty four. So defensively, Alcorn, you know they 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 had some some spurts, but they just weren't able to do anything offensively. Alcorn twelve first downs, one hundred and seventeen rushing yards on the night, two point nine yards per carry, uh, sixty yards through the air, nine of twenty one. They had one interception, no touchdowns, one hundred and seventy seven yards of offense for the Braves. 2.9 yards per play. They did fumble three times. They lost one very rainy night off and on in this game. I had a weather delay. Um, they punted 10, 10 times for 338 yards, 33.8 yard average. UAB finished with 300, 302 yards on the ground, 5.7 yards per carry, two touchdowns. They had 32 first downs. All corn, two, I mean, UAB 215 yards through the air, 23 or 33, two touchdowns with the one interception. 517 yards for the Blazers, uh, six yards per play. They fumbled twice and lost them both. So all corn forced three turnovers and they turned it over two times. Um, UAB punted one time for 64 yards. All corn was four or 15 on third downs, 0 for 0 on fourth down. UAB six or 15 on third down, one for two on fourth down. All corn did have uh, one sack. UAB had five sacks. I'm mean, assuming uh, all corn was one for one in the red zone. No sacks. Uh, UAB five or seven in the red zone with five sacks. Uh, they made all five of the extra points, and neither team missed a field goal. Two for two for UAB, one for one for Alcorn. Uh, Roderick Hartsfield was one for two for Alcorn for 31 yards. Xavier Vaughn, five of 12 for 25 yards. Tyler Macon, three of seven for four yards and an interception. Uh, Macon was sacked three times. Vaughn was sacked twice. Jacob Zeno. 23 or 33 for 215 yards, two touchdowns, one interception, one sack. Alcorn was led on the ground by Macon. He had 12 carries for 37 yards. Vaughn, eight for 29. Uh, Brandon Rogers, five for 11. Chikori and Sewell, five for 11. Lee Beebe Jr. had 82 yards on 15 carries for the Blazers, two touchdowns. Isaiah Jacobs, 12 for 58. Alcorn was led in receiving by uh, Diablo McGee. With one catch for 31 yards, uh, Griffin two for seven. Cam Shanks led UAB with six, six catches for 73 yards. Amari Thomas three for 28 and a touchdown. Jeffrey McKelton led the Braves with nine tackles. He also had one tackle for loss. Uh, the Marion Edwards had seven tackles and one tackle for loss. Markel McLaurin had uh, uh, six tackles and a half a tackle for loss. Wallace Melton had six tackles as well. 
on the night. And Edwin Summerall had six tackles also for the Braves. Uh, Malachi Bailey had five tackles on the night. McKelton and Summerall each had forced fumbles, uh, recoveries by McLaurin and McCall, and interception was by McLaurin. So, like I said, defensively, Alcorn didn't play really. You know, they 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 had their moments defensively. Um, they just couldn't move the ball offensively. And like I said, eventually that's gonna catch up with you um, in a game where you you know you did kind of put UAB in some odd spots where they you know they had to fight off turnovers. And and that you know that kind of kind of got them off off schedule a little bit, but offensively, you know, the Braves just couldn't really make anything happen. And you know, when 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 you have that going against you, um, it's it's tough to tough to get out of that hole. And and they just came up came up short in this one. Our final uh, Thursday night game was a a game that was a back and forth affair for quite a while. Um, JSU had that the opportunities in this game, ended up losing 30 to 14. Um, ULM to me, they didn't really look great, but they had a game plan and they basically stuck with it till it came through for them. Um, JSU hit a couple big plays here and there, but they just couldn't consistently do much in this game. They did show some some promise, but um in a game that I thought the teams would be a little bit more even. I thought JSU might have had a better chance, but um, ULM is putting some things together. You know, they, they have new coaching staff, and they seem to be kind of building this program the way they, they want it to look, and maybe this will be the, the, the time they turn the corner. But um, JSU did have them on their heels from time to time, but they just couldn't get the key stops when they needed them, um, and they couldn't consistently hit the plays that they needed. But they would trail this game 14-7 to seven at the half um, after being tied at seven for um, most, of the sec- most of the second quarter. A late touchdown with 14 seconds left put ULM up 14-7 to seven, um, at the half. Chance, you would score first in the second half to tie the game up at 14, and then um, UAB would get a third-quarter touchdown, a fourth-quarter field goal, and then a fourth-quarter touchdown um, to, to seal this game. No, like I said, never really got comfortable, but they, you know, they were able to withstand the JSU punches. Uh, Tiger 16 first downs, Blazers seven. I mean, Tiger 16 first downs, Warhawks 17 first downs. Uh, JSU only 59 yards on the ground, two and a half yards per carry with one touchdown. Uh, UAB, why do I keep saying ULM? It's too many you, you, U's. ULM, uh, 204 yards on the night on the ground, 41 carries, five yards per carry, two touchdowns, 227 through the air for JSU, 24, 29, one touchdown, one interception, 132 yards through the air for the Warhawks, uh, 11 of 15 through the air, two touchdowns, no interceptions, total offense, 286 for JSU, 53 plays, 5.4 yards per play. They fumbled twice, didn't lose either, uh, eight penalties for 60 yards. 336 yards for ULM, 56 plays, six yards per play, uh, no fumbles, nine penalties for 46 yards. JSU averaged 42.8 yards per punt. Uh, ULM, 39 yards per punt. JSU got five of 12 on third down, 0 for 1 on fourth down. Warhawks, five of 14 on third down, two or two on fourth down. Uh, one for one in the red zone for JSU. Uh, ULM, three or three in the red zone. JSU did have two sacks. Uh, ULM also had two sacks. Uh, ULM was three or four on extra points, one for one on field goals. JSU was two or two on extra points. Uh, individually, Jacoby and Morgan, 28 of 20, 23 or 28 for uh, 228 yards, one touchdown, one interception. He was like twice. General Booty, 10 of 14, 104 yards, one touchdown. He was like twice, no interceptions. Uh, Maude Miller led JSU with nine carries for 46 yards. Uh, Terrell Travis had six for 12. Ahmad Harvey, Hardy, excuse me, had 103 yards for ULM on 19 carries, one touchdown. James Jones, nine for 54 and a touchdown. Uh, Jonas Fortillion had two catches for 51 yards and a touchdown. Marvin Landry, four for 51. Uh, Travis Terrell, six for 45. Javon Campbell led ULM with four catches for 83 yards and a touchdown. Devon, Devon Wells. Four for 26 and one touchdown. Uh, Ashton Taylor led JSU with 10 tackles 
Also had a half a tackle for loss and a half a sack. Reed Pulliam, uh, eight tackles, one tackle for loss. Isaiah Guthrie, six tackles, one tackle for loss, and one sack. Cameron Smith, five tackles. Uh, Jaden Ward, five tackles, one tackle for loss. Uh, B.J. Washington, five tackles, a half a tackle for loss, and half a sack. And also Philip Webb chipped in with uh, five tackles on the night. And like I said, this you know this was a game that you know the opportunities were there. Like I said, just you really kind of struggled to run the ball, which is something I thought that they would have success doing, but not being able to move the ball on the ground and costly penalties um, against a team who seems, like I said, seem to be showing a pulse. They they have you know they have a a game plan and a system that they that they trying to install at ULM, and they seem to be finding the right the right rhythm. Um, at least early. They do have a big game next week against uh, U- UAB. So we'll see, you know, where the Warhawks are um, in the in the near future. Not that it has any real effect on anybody here, but, you know, it's always good to keep tabs on those kind of teams. Um, JSU plays Lane on Saturday, and I missed the, the Alcorn game. But Alcorn goes to Vandy on Saturday. So they have another FBS game. Uh, JSU gets Lane College at home to open up their home schedule. Uh, moving on to the Saturday games, um, we'll start off with Bethune Cookman. Uh, they dropped a forty-eight to three decision to South Florida. Uh, this was a fourteen nothing game after one quarter. Uh, U- uh, USF again with the U's. Uh, USF jumped out to a twenty-eight to nothing lead before Cade Hector got a 48 yard field goal for the Wildcats with twenty-two seconds left in the first half. To make the score twenty-eight to three, um, John Cannon would get uh, USF on the board again right at halftime with a fifty-three-yard field goal to make the score thirty-one to three, um, and then the Bulls would basically um, kick one, kick another, uh, another field goal, and then get two touchdowns in the uh, third quarter to go up forty-eight to three, and teams would play a scoreless fourth quarter as, as the Bulls won this game forty-eight to three. BCU, 17 first downs, USF 20, 48 yards on the ground for um, for Bethune-Cookman on 41 carries, 1.2 yards per carry, 231 on the ground for the Bulls, five yards per carry, five touchdowns, 250, uh, excuse me, they, they had 252 total yards. They lost 21 yards on the ground. Uh, you, you, um, BCU, 122 yards passing, 17 or 33, no touchdowns, two interceptions. USF, 172 yards passing, 15 or 23. Uh, one touchdown, no interceptions. 170 total yards for the Wildcats. 74 plays, 2.3 yards per play. They fumbled once, didn't lose it. They had 10 penalties for 75 yards. USF, 403 yards. The offense, 69 plays, 5.8 yards per play. Uh, no fumbles. They had seven penalties for 85 yards. This game had a, a lot of penalties. Uh, 41.6 yards per punt average for the Wildcats. 46 and a half for the Bulls. Uh, but don't cook me three of 18 on third down, one for two on fourth down, 0 for one in the red zone. They did have three sacks. So that's a good number for the defense to at least generate some kind of pressure in this game. Um, USF eight of 15 on third down, one or two on fourth down. They were six or seven in the red zone. Uh, they had three sacks as well. They were six or six on field goals. I mean, our extra points and two for two on field goals. Uh, BCU was one for one on field goals. Individual numbers, Cam Ransom, 12 and 19 for Bethune Cookman for 85 yards. He had one interception. He was sacked once. Luke Sprague, five of eight for 37 yards. Uh, He was sacked twice. Uh, Michael Bowens was 0 for six on the night. He threw one interception. Um, Byron Brown led USF with 13 completions, 20 attempts, 152 yards, no touchdown, no interceptions. He was sacked once. Uh, Courtney Reese led uh, Bethune Cookman with 16 carries, 16 yards on 10 carries. Um, Cam Ransom had eight carries for 12 yards as, uh, as well. Darnell Dees had two for 11. Kelly Joyner led USF with 14 carries for 78 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, Brown, eight for 74 and a touchdown. Teron Keith, seven for 39 and a touchdown. Lorenzo Jenkins led the Wildcats with five catches for 53 yards. 
Abdul Rahman Yashin led USF with five catches for 73 yards. Sean Atkins had four for 42. Defensively, Darius Der uh, Thomas led the Wildcats with eight tackles. He also had two tackles for loss and one sack. Strong game for him. Uh, Johnny Harris had six six tackles. Caleb Blake had six tackles. Jeremy Graves had six tackles. He also had a half a tackle for loss and a half a sack. Jermaine uh, Mejia Pastor had five tackles. And Stephen Sparrow Jr. had five tackles. Adrian Hall had five tackles as well. Uh, Jefferson LaFont had one tackle for loss and a, and a sack. So, you know, like I said, did games like this, man, it's really hard to kind of make heads or tails of it. Um, Bethune-Cookman, they seem to have did some, some positive things. You know, they were able to get in the red zone. They did have three sacks on defense. Um, this team is still searching for that identity. Um, they played three quarterbacks in this game. I don't think any of the three really stood out. Um, the running game still isn't there yet, but – you know, this was a FBS game, so, you know, it's not always a lot that you can take from it. So, we, you know, we'll see. We'll get a better idea of where this team is next, this upcoming week as they host Mercer. So, we'll, you know, we'll have a, a, a better handle on this Bethune-Cookman team um, because, you, you know, you really don't get a, a, a huge feel for a team on these FBS games. So, um, I, I think you're just going to have to kind of, Wait another week, and I think this week upcoming should give you a better idea of what this team is, and it'll it'll kind of help you um, start to see some things. Hopefully, come into come into um, come into focus for them as they they really um, trying to make their way through the early portion of the season. A lot is you know a lot is expected of this team, so we'll we'll see you know if they can kind of get themselves on track because they, you know, they have a lot, a lot ahead of them. Uh, let's jump to our next game. And that would be Gremlin at ULL. Um, this was, this was a game, another, another like I said, another money game. Uh, Raging Cajuns win this game 40 to 10. Uh, they jumped out to a 30, nothing lead at halftime before Gremlin played them to a 10, 10 still made in the second half. So Gremlin was able to kind of get some things, going in the second half on, on both sides of the ball to kind of close this game out. Um, they would get a, um, they would get a touchdown uh, by Katravian Hargrove from one yard out in the, in the third quarter. Um, that was, that kept the nine play 75 yard drive. So they did put together uh, a solid drive in the third quarter to get a touchdown. And then they would get a short drive late in the game to kick the kick a 50 yard field goal to um, give them their final points. But like I said, they 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 gave up or they gave up a lot of points early in the, in in this game. They really had a seven nothing first quarter. Um, they gave up twenty three points in the in the second quarter, which really switched them up, switched this game momentum wise and, and swung it in the favor of ULL. Uh, ground offenses with twelve first downs. ULL twenty four, uh, seventy five yards rushing for the Tigers. One hundred and eighteen on the ground for the Raging Cajuns. Um, that's actually a solid defensive game for Gremlin when you look at this uh, the way ULL likes to run the ball. Um, they typically don't win when they run for less than 200 yards. So Gremlin did they did their job in that aspect, but um, they gave up 363 through the air to the Raging Cajuns, and that that's what was their downfall. 29 and 38, three touchdowns, one interception. Gremlin 166 yards passing, uh, no touchdowns, one interception. 241 yards of offense for the Tigers, 48 plays, uh, five uh, yards per play. They didn't fumble. Six penalties, 25 yards, uh, 481 total offense for ULL, six, um, 66 plays, 7.3 yards per play. They fumbled once, didn't lose it. They had one penalty for five yards. So this game was not that – was was pretty lightly penalized, seven penalties for 30 yards total. Not bad. 42.6 uh, yard average per punt for Gremlin. Uh, ULL did not punt. Gremlin was 4 of 11 on third down, 0 for 0 on fourth down, uh, 1 for 1 in the red zone. They had one sack, and they made the only extra point, and they were 1 for 2 on field goals. Uh, ULL 7 of 11 
on third down, 0 for 1 on fourth down. They were 4 or 5 in the red zone, and they did not have a sack. So, Grambling defense, Grambling offensive line did a pretty good job of protecting the quarterback. Uh, they were 4 4 on extra points and 2 or 2 on field goals uh, on the night. Individually, Miles Crawley, 19 to 28, 166 yards, no touchdown, one interception, one sack. Uh, ben Wool- Woolridge, uh, 25 or 33, 308 yards, three touchdowns, one interception, one sack. Uh, Hargrove led Groundland with 61 yards on uh, 12 carries and one touchdown. Uh, Trey Bradford, seven for 26. It's not a bad first game to say he just, you know, he just came in not that long ago. I expect some good things from that backfield. Um, I think Groundland's run game is going to get better as the season goes on. Uh, Zylan Perry led ULL with five carries for 45 yards. Um, receiving Nick Howard, five catches for 68 yards for Grambling. Um, Harvey Broussard led ULL with four catches for 76 yards. Tavion Smith, two for 63 and a touchdown. Defensively, Blake Davis led Grambling with eight tackles. He also had one tackle for loss and one sack. Uh, he did have an interception as well, so really strong game for him. Uh, Jonathan Horton and Caleb Lee Collins and Isaac Washington each had four tackles apiece. Washington also had a tackle for loss. You know, like I said, games like this, you know, usually it, it is always like a play or two that'll swing it. And, you know, Gremlin, you know, they 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 got snowed under in the second quarter and they kind of weren't able to to get out, you know, get back in it. But playing, a, you know, it, it's a small thing, but playing a even second half score-wise, I think it, it is a win. You know, sometimes you – Sometimes you got to win those kind of small battles and they, you know, they were able to win a win, win some kind of battle to come out of there with some, some positivity to, to build on. So I, I think, you know, this team is going to get better as the season goes on. And, you know, I expect them to be a factor in the West division. Next game that we're going to jump to is another game that was not pretty. And that's Alabama a and taking on Auburn. Uh, the War Eagles slash Tigers slash Plainsmen, depending on what sport you play, um, beat the Bulldogs seventy three to three. This game was twenty eight to nothing after one quarter. Uh, Auburn was able to get a lot of big plays. They had a thirty four yard touchdown, a sixty seven yard touchdown, a forty four yard touchdown, and a four yard touchdown in the first quarter. Um, then they would get a thirty two yard field goal, a seventy yard pass. Uh, Bulldogs with 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 with, with squeezing a forty three yard field goal there, and then a four yard run, and a one yard run. Excuse me, a four yard run and a two yard run for Auburn made this score fifty two to three at the half. Um, they would score. They would score um, twenty one more points in this game. Two touchdowns in the third quarter, and one in the fourth um, on a on a on a block punt return. Uh, 57 yard pass and a 37 yard pass. So they, you know, Auburn kind of similar both as Arkansas. They they looking for positivity. They need it. Um, the, the way this team has been has been playing the last the last few seasons. And so I I, I kind of had a feeling that if they got their foot on these teams, they would um they would basically kind of go for the throat. So and not really super surprised at this game the way it turned out. But you know, all in all. You you know, you know these kind of like I said, I don't like these kind of games. I don't like games against. I don't I don't mind FBS games. I don't mind them. I don't like games against Power Five teams, um, unless you're in a position to compete. And you know, a lot of the, our teams aren't in that position, so it makes it a little. It, it makes it tougher um, for you at times. And this was a tough game, man. You know, it, it's tough to look at a score and see. 73 to 3, you know, it it, it 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 hurts. And there's not a lot to really take from it. Um hopefully, you know, you make it out with with hopefully you make it out fairly healthy and, and give yourself an opportunity to uh make some things happen. Looking at the uh at the box score, um 13 first down for the Bulldogs, 18 for the Tigers. 36 yards rushing on 36 attempts for the Bulldogs, one yard per carry. 177 yards on the ground for Auburn, 18 carries, 9.8 yards per carry, three touchdowns. 
Uh, 204 yards through the air for Alabama AM 16 and 34, no touchdown, no interceptions. Auburn, 451 through the air, 108, I mean, 18 or 28, six touchdowns, no interceptions. 240 yards for the Bulldogs on 70 plays, 3.4 yards per play. They fumbled once but didn't lose it. They had seven penalties for 60 yards. Auburn, 628 total offense, 46 plays, uh, um, two fumbles, and they lost them both. They had five penalties for 60 yards. Alabama and them, 32.7 yard per punt average. Auburn, 46 yard average. Bulldogs, two of 16 on third down, one for two on fourth down. They were 0 for 2 in the red zone. So they had a couple of chances um, to get some points in the red zone, but came up empty. They went 1 for 3 on field goals. Uh, Auburn, 8, 4 or 6 on third downs, no fourth down attempts, 4 or 4 in the red zone. Three sacks on the night, 10 or 10 on extra points, one for one on field goals. Individually, uh, Cornelius Brown, 13 or 21 for Alabama AM. No touchdowns, no interceptions, one sack. Xavier Langford, three or seven for 22 yards, 182 yards for Brown, uh, 22 yards for Langford, no touchdowns, no interceptions, two sacks. Peyton Thorne led the Tigers going 13 or 21 for 322 yards, and four touchdowns, no interceptions, no sacks. Ryan Morrow had five carries for 18 yards for the Bulldogs. Eaglin, 10 for seven, excuse me, 10 for 10 on the night. Um, Jaquez Hunter had four carries for 53 yards for Auburn and a touchdown. Thorne, four for 49 and a touchdown. Uh, receiving Duke Miller led the Bulldogs with six catches for 92 yards. That's a pretty strong game for him. A Hamburg, two for 62. Malcolm Simmons led the Tigers with three catches for 91 yards and a touchdown. Perry Thompson. A two for 82 and a touchdown. Keandre Lambert Smith, uh, three for 80 and two touchdowns. Cam Coleman, two for 62 and a touchdown. Marvin Smith led the Bulldogs with five tackles. Uh, Montreal Campbell, Caleb Dawson, Cortez Andrews, and Jordan Milton each had three tackles apiece uh, for the Bulldogs. No, they didn't record any tackles for loss. They had uh, one forced fumble. And a fun recovery. So, like I said, you know, when you in a game like this, you you know, you have to take advantage of every opportunity, every opportunity that you have, and that means not coming up short in the red zone. When you get in the red zone in these kind of games, you have to, you have to score. You can't, you know, you can't come up short um, in these kind of games in the in the red zone because you just, you know, you're just shooting yourself in the foot, and you can't afford to do that in these kind of games. Your opportunities. Are probably going to be limited in the in these kind of games compared to your opposition. So you know you really need to kind of you know put those points on the board um, when you can because you just you just hate to see a team you know waste those opportunities. So all in all, you know you're going from one extreme to the other this week. You're going from a FBS opponent, a Power Four opponent, to a D two opponent in Kentucky State. So. You got an opportunity to kind of get to kind of get right and get yourself back, um, and, and see you know and see where things take you. So, not you know not there's a, there's never really a lot to take from these games when you play, you know, and when you don't play great. So, uh, I expect to see a different team on Saturday. And like I said, we will talk about all these games um, when we do our preview on Wednesday. Next game we have is um, Valley. And that new logo taking on the Tennessee State Tigers in Nashville. Um, this was a this was a valley type game, man. They they fell behind big and they they were able to kind of you know do some things and, and make the score a little bit closer than what it was. Um they trailed 31 to nothing after the first half. Um and they outscored Tennessee State 21 to 10 in the fourth quarter. Again, that's kind of like what I said, you know, with, you know, finding those small things um, to kind of build on and having a strong fourth quarter um, that really, you know, that really changed, you know, that really makes things look a little bit better uh, for you when you, when you look at, you know, when you look at a game like that, um, they, they were able to, 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 to pick up the bulk of their yards in the second, in the third and the fourth quarter. They had 81 yards uh, on, on, on one drive, which led to a touchdown. That was a 12-play drive. They had a 7-play, 75-yard drive, which led to a touchdown. 
And then they had a six play 79 yard drive that led to a touchdown all in the fourth quarter. So they, you know, whether that's Tennessee state taking a foot off the gas or Valley just, you know, finding that late spark, you know, who, you know, who really knows, but they were able to find some kind of positivity late in this game because early in this game, not a lot positive for them. Uh, 15 yards on their first drive, two yards in their second drive, three yards on their third drive, minus three on their fourth drive, which was a fumble. Um, two yards on their uh, on their fifth drive, and then they got uh, 44 yards um, on, on on a drive in the second quarter, and then they had uh, their last drive with one yard. So, not a lot there for them. Um, in the first half and you can see why they, you know, why they fell behind They had a fumble INT and the rest were punts. So just not a good first quarter for first half of Valley. And, you know, they, they just never really were able to get in this game. Uh, Tennessee state scored on a 55 yard pass to open up the game. They had a one yard pass. Uh, they had a 54 yard scoop and score. They kicked the 20 yard field goal. They had a 31 yard uh, pass. From Draylon Ellis to Karate Benson, uh, I, I love that name. Um, and that, that was the, you know their first their first half scoring. Um, then Valley, like I say, Valley would would, would 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 chip in some points in the fourth quarter to kind of you know cut into the lead, but it was ultimately too little, too late. Uh, Jaden Sisk went seven of ten for Valley for 110 yards, uh, one touchdown, no interception, no sacks. Ruben Lee. Two for two for 55 yards and a touchdown, no interceptions, no sacks. Tajarian Williams, four of 11 for 30 yards, no touchdowns, one interception. He was sacked three times. Uh, Draylon Ellis, 21 of 33 for 356 yards, um, three touchdowns, one interception, no sacks. Zamarion Kendall, 12 carries for 26 yards for Valley. Uh, Sisk, two for 11. Uh, Jacoby Thomas, six for 11 and a touchdown. Jaden McGill led Tennessee State with seven carries for 41 yards. Jordan Gant, nine for 37. Nathan Rembert led Valley with four catches for 81 yards and a touchdown. Carrick Ross, six for 74 and a touchdown. Uh, Jalal Dean, nine for 144 and a touchdown for the Tigers. Uh, Benson, two for 86 and a touchdown. Davis, two for 78. Valley was led by Ryan Quinney with seven tackles. He also had a tackle for loss. Jordan Montgomery, six tackles, two tackles for loss. Uh, Chauncey Triplett had five tackles. Brandon Williams, Kobe Bird, uh, Charlie Williams, and DeAndre Clark each had four tackles. Uh, Williams had a tackle for loss as well. Eric Campbell also had a tackle for loss. Uh, Raphael Marshall had an interception for Valley. So, you know, like I said, did Valley, these are valley type games. Sometimes they have games where they where they just fall behind and then they, you know, they scratch and claw their they way back into it. And you know, a lot of times that that happens on the road. Valley is not necessarily a team that's gonna play uh pretty well away from home. So, you know, they tend to kind of struggle on the road. And this was a this was a tough affair. You know, you fall behind uh 31 nothing before you can get yourself back into the game. So they're gonna have to, you know, do some searching and 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 continue to grow um as they stay on the road with a trip to uh Beaumont to take on Lamar on Saturday. So you know, nothing easy for Valley early in the season as you know, they always play those tough non-conference games. And and ultimately they 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 you know they they come up short again. Uh my next game is, is a game that if you're um a Southern fan, this was a very disappointing game for you. Um this was a 21-7 loss to McNeese State. Southern led this game seven to nothing for basically two full quarter for basically two full quarters. They led this game seven nothing. There was nothing, nothing after the first quarter. Um solid first drive for Southern ended in a fumble. Um, then they couldn't really move the ball much. McNeese had a solid first drive, missed a field goal, then they couldn't do much. Um, they changed McNeese changed quarterbacks. Um and then, you know, their offense kind of stalled. Uh, they had two turnovers, uh, two fumbles, and Southern was able to turn one fumble into a touchdown. They turned the other fumble into an interception. Um, and then the third quarter was both teams kind of driving a little bit and then punting. Uh, Southern would 
you know, between the end of the third quarter and beginning of the fourth quarter, Southern would put together a decent drive, get in the field goal range, get the field goal blocked. Magnese would return it down to their to Southern's six-yard line, and then the Cowboys would score their first uh, two short yardage touchdowns in back-to-back possessions as Clifton McDowell had a six-yard touchdown to tie the game up at seven at the extra point. Uh, Southern would get the ball again. They would snap, have a bad snap on the punt. Uh, McDowell would get a one-yard touchdown after that. And just like that, Magnese goes from down 7 nothing to up 14-7. to And then um, basically a back-breaking drive by Magnese, uh, buoyed by two big runs by D'Angelo Durham and Clinton McDowell. With, uh, Clifton McDowell, excuse me, would, would end in a, a Durham two-yard touchdown run would put Magnese up 21-7. to um, That came with 5 or 4 left in the game, and Southern just couldn't really make any moves after that to get themselves back into this game. 16 first downs for Southern, 13 for Magnese, uh, 66 yards for Southern on the ground. They lost 51 yards uh, on the ground, 40. One of that came on that bad snap. So not necessarily, a, a, you know, still not a great, even if you take that loss, a yardage out, you still had 117 yards, 107 yards offense on the ground, which is still not great. Um, 164 on the ground for Magnese. Uh, 42 carries, 3.9 yards per carry, three touchdowns. Southern, 1.7 yards per carry, one touchdown. 132 yards through the air for Southern. Uh, 13 of 29, no touchdowns, one interception. 108 yards for Magnese through the air, 10 of 23. They had 4.7 yards per carry. I mean, per uh, per pass. Uh, excuse me, 4.7 yards per completion. Uh, why am I reading that wrong? Four point. Excuse me, 4.9 yards per attempt and 10.8 yards per completion. Neither team threw a touchdown, so they had the only interception uh, on the night. 198 yards of total offense for Southern, 68 plays, 2.9 yards per play. They fumbled three times and lost two. Um, McNeese, 272 on total offense, 65 plays, 4.2 yards per play. They fumbled twice and lost both. Uh, highly penalized game, 21 total penalties uh, between the two teams. Southern 10 for 95, McNeese. 11 for 118. Uh, Southern average 34.7 yards per punt. Magnese 49.8. Magnese had a really strong effort from their punter. Um, they needed every one of those punts to keep Southern from flipping the field, honestly. You know, Southern um, would not really get great field position, even though they got some stops in, in, in decent spots. But Magnese would keep them pent, and Southern was unable to really drive the ball. Uh, Southern was 7 of 18 on third downs. Uh, 0 for 1 on fourth down, Magnese 7 of 16 uh, on third down, 1 for 2 on fourth down, uh, 1 for 3 in the red zone for Southern, so came up empty on two red zone trips. That's a killer in a game like this. Uh, 3 for 3 for Magnese. Southern had two sacks, Magnese with none. Um, 1 for 1 on extra points for Southern, 3 for 3 for Magnese. Both teams missed their only field goal attempt. Um, one takeaway that I would say for Southern that was positive, even though it don't really look like that statistically, I thought the offensive line played a pretty solid game. Um, they didn't give up any sacks and they, you know, they only, uh, you know, they only allowed the offense to lose like 10 yards, uh, on the ground. So not a lot of, you know, not a lot of tackles for loss by Magnese, even though that defense was, was, you know, really sound in this game. Uh, Magnese only had, uh, Magnese finished with, um, three tackles for loss on the night. So that's, you know, that's not bad when you have a unit that was really, you know, not letting Southern get a lot. They just couldn't really get any plays against Southern in the backfield. Uh, Michael Davey is a name that, you know, even though, you know, this, you know, this is a, a Southland team, uh, you will see them again when they play all corner in a few weeks. But Michael Davey is one of the best linebackers in the country. He finished with 17 tackles on the night. Um, he's a guy that's everywhere. All at once, um, definitely um, a guy to, to 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 watch if you ever have a chance to watch him. Uh, Noah Biden, twelve or twenty six for Southern, one hundred and eighteen yards, no touchdown, one interception, no sacks. Uh, Camden, six killer, was nine to nineteen for Magnese, eighty yards, no touchdown, no interception. He was sacked once. Clifton McDowell, only one for four with twenty eight yards, uh, no touchdown, no interception. He was sacked once. Uh, Kobe Dillon, 14 carries, 51 yards for Southern. Kendrick Rhymes, 11 for 31. Uh, D'Angelo Durham led Magnese with 13 carries for 65 yards in the touchdown. Clifton McDowell, 10 for 65 and two touchdowns. 
Uh, Jermaine Minor had two catches for 37 yards for Southern. Through pre Fuller, four for 36. That's six catches for your tight ends. Um, Southern's tight ends, I think, caught like five or six passes all season last year. So that's at least an improvement right there. Uh, Jermichael Carter had one catch for 28 yards for McNeese. Jaheed Marks, one for 21. And Jesse Campbell, two for 21. Southern was led defensively by uh, Jamarius Brown with seven tackles. He had one tackle for loss and one sack. Kelby Givens, six six tackles, one tackle for loss. Uh, Derek Williams and William Willie Miles uh, each had five tackles. Miles had a half a tackle for loss. Uh, Horatio Johnson and Vincent Page each had four tackles. Page had a uh, half a tackle for loss as well. Um, interception, uh, excuse me, forced fumble um, was by Johnson. Recoveries were by Bourne and Yassine. So, again, this was a game that Southern should have won. I mean, there's no other way to put it. You can't sugarcoat it um, in, in any way. Um, this is, you know, they, you can't lose games like this. Um, Magnese is an okay team. They're not great. I don't I don't know how many games they're going to win. I'd be surprised they win six games this year. But this was a game that Southern had control for the, the bulk of the game. And then on the flip of a switch, you know, this game turned. And they they didn't have any kind of offense to get themselves back into the game. So you're kind of hoping to see Southern learn and grow from this and, um, you know, move forward as they play uh, Savannah State on Saturday. So, you know, I had to get back on the horse and, and get ready for your home opener on Saturday. Um, that takes us to our next game on, on Saturday. And that would be um, Florida A&M against South Carolina State. This was a game that it looked like the Rattlers were going to take control. You know, it looked like they were going to, you know, pull away. Um, then South Carolina State got ahead, and it looked like they were going to, you know, break the break the Rattlers' 20-game home winning streak. And then, fam, you would ultimately score 15 points in the fourth quarter and preserve that winning streak, stretch it out to 21, and win this game by a score 22 to 18. Um, South Carolina State had a lot of opportunities. They had a touchdown that was um, ruled not a touchdown, and they ultimately ended up having to kick a field goal on their drive. Um, you know that that's a game changer. But when you're up eighteen, um, when you're up eighteen to seven on the road. You you need to close that game out if you're South Carolina State. Again, Florida and them not a pretty game, but they found a way to win. I don't know how long you can keep playing like this. Um, they reminded me a lot of that 2014 Florida State team uh, where they would be behind and then they would pull out a close game or, you know, just had to make a game harder than what it was. Um, all, eventually, it's going to catch up with you. So if you find if you found you, yes, you're happy you're 2-0, um, but you haven't really looked great. You know, you, have, you still have a lot of questions uh, to answer, but ultimately, at the end of the day, the job is to win the game, and they did that again. Um, but they're gonna have to kind of clean some things up and, and and get themselves get themselves back and get right um, because they you know they played a pretty a pretty solid game. South Carolina State also had a had a really good game under Coach Chinnis Berry in his first game at South Carolina State. Uh, they just you know neither team really could take take control of the game until Fam you kind of got the lead late. Uh, 19 first downs for the Bulldogs, 26 for the Rattlers. 154 yards on the ground for the Bulldogs, 4.4 yards per carry, 35 carries. When touchdown, fam, you 133 yards on the ground, 34 carries, 3.9 yards per carry, no touchdowns. 132 yards passing for South Carolina State, 12 of 26. One touchdown, no interceptions. 282 through the air for the Rattlers, 23 of 38. Three touchdowns, no interceptions. 286. Total offense for the Bulldogs, 61 plays, 4.7 yards per play, no fumbles. Um, six, six, 10 penalties, 65 yards. FAMU, 415 yards of offense, 72 plays, 5.8 yards per play. They fumbled twice, lost them both. Uh, they had six penalties for 65 yards, 44.3 yards per punt average for the Bulldogs, 48 for the Rattlers. South Carolina State, 3 of 10 on third down. FAMU, 9 of 15, so a really good game for them on third down. Uh, South Carolina State, did not attempt the fourth down, fam. You was one for one. Bulldogs finished four or four in the red zone, two or four for the Rattlers. Um, South Carolina State, one sack, fam. You two. Uh, South Carolina State missed the extra point, fam. You were two for two, fam. You missed a field goal. 
Um, South Carolina State was two for two on field goals. So a, a missed field goal, two fumbles, you know, those, those are opportunities that probably could have turned into points. So, you know, the, the score could have been a little bit different for FAMU, but again, they keep finding ways to survive. Um, if you, you know, if you're a FAMU fan, then you're wiping your brow every week. If you're a fan of anybody else, you're just waiting for that, that, that shooter drop. You know, you're looking like they can't keep getting away with this, um, but they're still doing it. And um, if you found you just ride that to the wheels fall off. Um, Eric Phoenix, 12 or 25 for the Bulldogs, 132 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions, two sacks. Daniel Richardson, 23 or 38, 282 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions, uh, one sack. Uh, DeAndre Duhart, 10 carries, 74 yards. KZ Adams, 11 for 60. Uh, Levante Somerset, 11 carries, 62 yards for found you. Kelvin Dean, three for 23. Caden High had three catches for 49 yards for the Bulldogs. Justin Smith Brown, th- four for 36. Kobe, Gro- Kobe Gross, five for uh, tw- five for 94 for the Rattlers and one touchdown. Carter Johnson, six for 68 and a touchdown. Tight ends getting it done. Uh, Jalen Ward, two for 37. Fam, you were led defensively by Eric Horn and Andre Powell Jr. Allen Smith each had six tackles. Uh, Deco Wilson had five tackles. He has a tackle for loss and a sack. Uh, Simon Hines had four tackles and a tackle for loss. Nayron Jenkins had four tackles as well. So again, you know, like I said earlier, you know, this, you know, this is a team that, you know, they keep, they keep, you know, getting by by the skin of their teeth. And, you know, eventually, yes, this is going to catch up to you. Um, this week coming up, probably not going to be one of the kind of games they play in Miami on, on Saturday. So Hurricanes looked really good against the Gators. Cam Ward had a great game. Uh, their defense played solid. So there's going to be a tough task for the Rattlers. But I know that team is not going to back down. Um, and we'll just see how they do. Um, but they picked up their second win on the season. And they continue to, to kind of fight and get themselves in the mix. Um, our final Saturday game was a – Game and a result that a lot of people, myself included, did not expect. Um, Texas Southern had a really, really good game against Prairie View, winning this game 27 to 9, uh, snapping a nine game losing streak um, to Prairie View. Um, so they, they win Labor Day Classic for the first time in 10 years, and they did it in good fashion. On in Chris, Coach Chris, Coach Chris, Chris Dishman's first game. Um, Really solid effort uh, for the Tigers. Fell behind three to nothing, but were able to score uh, 13 unanswered before Prairie View got a field goal with no time left in the first half. The made it score 13 to six at the half. Uh, Prairie View would get another field goal. Um, they would get another field goal with 10 21 left in the third to make it score 13 to nine. Then TSU would get two touchdowns, one in the third, one in the fourth, two kind of put this game away and like I said they played a pretty a, a pretty solid game not a lot that you can take from them in this game you know I, I was very surprised by the effort their defense showed um I thought they the, I thought their defense played a, a really solid game Purview had some drops on offense but I thought TSU defense really really paved the way the running game was solid that, that was something that I had been looking at as a question mark for this team but on one Saturday, they answered that question. We'll see if they can continue to do it. Uh, 19 first down for the Tigers, 12 for the Panthers. 166 yards for TSU on the ground, 37 carries, four and a half yards per carry, two touchdowns. Prairie View, 21 yards rushing on the night on 21 carries, only one yard per carry. Um, no touchdowns, obviously. Um, 180 yards through the air for TSU, 19 of 29. One touchdown, no interceptions. Prairie View, 219 through the air. 18 of 40, 12, um, no touchdowns, no interceptions, 346 yards of offense for the Tigers, 66 plays. They averaged 5.2 yards per play. They fumbled twice, lost one. They had two penalties for 25 yards. Uh, Prairie View, 240 yards of offense on 61 plays, 3.9 yards per play. They fumbled twice and lost one. So both teams turned the ball over once. Uh, nine penalties for 89 yards for the Panthers. That's, that's always going to shoot you in the foot. Um, 
colleges are drive killers and drive extenders, depending on what side of the ball you're on. You don't want to have those happen to you, especially in a game like this where you need it, all the momentum that you could get. Um, 37.8 yard per punt average for TSU, 42 and a half for Prairie View. Uh, Tiger 6 of 15 on third downs, Panthers 4 of 15. Uh, Prairie View 0 for 1 on fourth downs, TSU 0 for 0. Red zone, TSU 3 for 3, Prairie View 1 for 2. TSU 5 sacks on the night. Great, great defensive effort. Uh, no sacks for Prairie View. Uh, 3 of 3 on extra points for TSU. Prairie View didn't score a touchdown, so no extra points. Uh, TSU was three, two or three on, on field goals. Prairie View was three for three. KJ Cooper, 19 of 24 for, for TSU, 180 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions, no sacks. Uh, Cameron Peters came in in the second half for Prairie View. He went 10 for 20 for 111 yards, no touchdown, no interceptions. He was sacked twice. Lucas Coley, 8 of 20 on the night, 108 yards, uh, full sacks, no touchdowns, no interceptions. Uh, Danny Green Jr., strong game for, for a true freshman in his first game. Uh, 15 carries, 81 yards, two touchdowns. That's a huge game, 5.4 yards per carry. Uh, Cooper had 52 yards on the ground as well. Um, average 8.7 yards per carry. Uh, Connor Wisham led Purdy with four carries of 15 yards on the night. Uh, Lamega McDowell had five carries of 15 yards as well. A.J. Bennett, two catches, 53 yards, had a nice 41-yard catch down the sideline uh, to set up a score for TSU. Jaron Johnson, four for 49. Trenton Leary, three for 30. And a touchdown. Shamar Savage, six catches, 105 yards for Prairie View. Uh, James Burns, four for 50. Defensively, Jacob Williams led TSU with seven tackles. He had one tackle for loss and one sack. Uh, Javis Williams had six tackles and a uh, pass breakup. Isaiah Bogarty, five tackles, one and a half tackle for loss, one sack. Canary Simmons, four tackles, one tackle for loss. Xavier Player, also four tackles as well. Uh, Prairie View was led defensively by Bryce Turner with nine tackles. He also had a half a tackle for loss. Cameron Franklin, six tackles. Terrell Coleman, six tackles, two tackles for loss. Freddie Bird, the third, uh, half a tackle for loss. Javon Jackson, five tackles. Uh, Aiden Jones, five tackles, a half a tackle for loss. C.J. Presley, five tackles as well. Just, you know, this was a strong effort for TSU. I mean, there's no other way to put it. You know, this this game was definitely a surprise to me. Um, you know, you, you always look at games like this and be like, you know, teams always have a shot in a rivalry game. But you don't, you know, in, in some aspects, you don't really expect that to happen. And, and you know, I thought Prairie View would be able to get some things done. They didn't really get anything done, uh, especially on the offensive side of the ball. You know, they they anytime they got something going there to drop pass, you know, they they just couldn't run the ball. You know, TSU defense played great in this game. And so TSU now is sitting at one and on conference, which is definitely a surprise. You know, other than you know, people in Houston and maybe a few other people, nobody thought TSU would be sitting at six and at one and oh uh in conference on Labor Day. So that's a huge win. Now you have to, you know, you have to continue with, um, you do play rice on Saturday. So you're jumping out of conference into a FBS game. Um, Prairie View gets to go to Northwestern state. Uh, that's going to be an interesting matchup, but both these teams, you know, they, they're kind of, you know, moving in different directions, but the tide can turn really quick and sweat. So, you know, don't, you know, one way or the other, you don't want to, you don't want to get too high. don't want to get too low because things can change pretty rapidly in this conference. Uh, final game of the weekend was on Sunday, and this was – it was a game. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. it. It was a game. You know, it was it, 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 it was what it was, and that's Alabama State and North Carolina Central Eagles win this game, uh, 31-24. Alabama State – Play the two quarterback system, you know, that's been the talk of the day, talk of the weekend. Um, Andrew Body went down with injury late in the fourth quarter. So waiting to see, you know, what the results of that is. Um, they played a two quarterback system that didn't really bode itself well to the, to this game. You know, you turn, you know, you turn the guy that you brought in to be 
the the guy for your offense, you turned him into a runner, which he had a really solid game running the ball. Uh, your, your passing quarterback didn't have a good game at all. And Central knew when he was in there, they could generate the pressure. And, you know, he, he wasn't really going to make a lot of things happen with his legs. Um, I don't like those kind of systems because when you play it like that and you have one guy come in to pass, one guy come in to run, it doesn't take long for teams to realize what you're doing. Um, and, and that's not the slighter guy like Andrew Body who can throw the football. Um, and I think that's, you know, not getting the most out of his skills um, when you turn him into a, a, a runner. But um, a big special teams touchdown and uh, Andrew Body run in the second quarter, turned a 21 nothing game um, into a 21-14 halftime game. After a weather delay, uh, Central would get a, a field goal and then Bama State would get a field goal. Uh, Central will get a touchdown in the third quarter, to, in the fourth quarter, going 31 20, 31 17. And Andrew Body will get his second touchdown run of the night, uh, this time for 38 yards, 38, 39 yards out to make the score 31 24. Uh, Eagles couldn't really do much with the ball late. T, uh, ASU had a chance, uh, threw a costly interception, and uh, the Eagles ran the clock out for now. 15 first downs for North Carolina Central, 16 for Alabama State. 151 yards rushing for North Carolina Central, 3. Uh, 4.4 yards per carry, 34 carries, two touchdowns, Alabama State, 203 yards on the ground, 42 carries, 4.8 yards per carry, two touchdowns, 119 yards through the air for Central, 9 of 18, one touchdown, no interceptions. Alabama State, eight, 88 yards, 9 of 17, no touchdowns, two interceptions, 270 yards of offense for the Eagles, 52 plays, 5.2 yards per play, no fumbles. Uh, six penalties, 50 yards. Bama State, 291 uh, total offense, 59 plays, uh, 4.9 yards per play. They fumbled once, didn't lose it. They had four penalties for 22 yards. Uh, neither team punted well in this game. Uh, Central, 39 yard average per punt. Bama State, 29.8 yard average per punt. Uh, some of that is just field position, and some of it was just, you know, just not great punts. Um, for either team, um, four ten for North Carolina Central on third down, Bama State four twelve, uh, oh for one on third on fourth down for Central, two for three for Bama State, including a big fourth down touchdown run, uh, red zone, uh, four for four for the Eagles, Bulldogs one. I mean, Hornets, don't kill me, y'all. Hornets one for one, uh, uh in the red zone, five sacks for North Carolina Central, two for Bama State. Uh, both teams were perfect on extra points, four for four for the Eagles, three for three for the Hornets. Um, both teams made their only field goal attempt. Um, when you look at the individual numbers, Walker Harris, 9 of 18, 119 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions, two sacks. Uh, Jonah O'Brien, 5 of 11 for Bama State, 61 yards, uh, no touchdown, two interceptions, four sacks. Andrew Body, 4 of 6 for 27 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. He was sacked once. Uh, Jamari Harris, I mean, Jamari Taylor, big game for the Eagles, 24 carries, 128 yards, two touchdowns on the ground. Really, really big game for him as he takes hold of the running back job there. Uh, Andrew Body, 15 carries, 134 yards, two touchdowns, 8.9 yards per carry on the night. Uh, Marcus Harris was the leading runner in terms of running backs with seven carries for 28 yards. Um, uh, Jaquin Davis, Three catches, 63 yards for the Eagles. Uh, Luke Bracey, one for 23. Eric Horn, one for 45 for Bama State uh, to lead them. Um, defensively, Bama State was led by uh, Demarcus Cunningham with eight tackles. Rico Dozier, six tackles, one tackle for loss, one sack. James Burgess, six tackles, one tackle for loss. Drake Johnson, five tackles on the night. Uh, Stephon young Roll four tackles, one tackle for loss, one sack. Traquan Thomas, four tackles. So, you know, like I said, it, this the score was probably closer than what this game really was. And that and that's a you know, that's that's a, a missed opportunity. I think, you know, the experiment they tried with the two quarterbacks, that's fine to start off a game, but you know, when you keep doing it, uh rotating the guys and, and you bring it in both guys at the same time, and you know, your quarterback who it split out wide isn't really a threat because you know teams don't have any reason to fear him out there. You know, you kind of you know, you kind of 
change the perception of what your offense is and how, how your play is going to look. So I think, you know, this Miles game is big for Bama State. You know, Miles has played them close the last few years, beat them last year. Um, that's going to be, you know, that's going to be a, a battle because, you know, Miles is going to come in this game fired up. Uh, Bama State has some questions to answer. You know, they're going to have to work and get themselves right um, and quickly. Like I said, this game, like I said, all season, all off season, all summer, and last week, this was a this is a perception game. Um, the winner is gonna be viewed one way. Central may not because they, you know, they didn't play necessarily great, but they won this game. Uh, but Bama State, the questions are gonna be flying in this week uh, on the Hornets, so they have to really right the ship, and they have to win. You know, they have to win that Miles game pretty comfortably to kind of start to turn things around. Um, the status of Andrew Body, you know, I'm not I'm not sure on that yet. So, you know, we won't really we won't really touch that much until, you know, we really figure out what's going on. Um if they if, if there's no Andrew Body, then this offense is definitely gonna be suspect. So, you know, there's a lot to keep an eye on on Bama State and, and it's a lot to see how they they turn the turn the tide on, on this situation and move forward. Um, that's gonna do it for today's show, man. Y'all thank y'all for, for, for sticking around. Um, I you know week one is always fun, but it's not fun when you gotta do recaps because like a ton of games. I'm um, losing my voice. So with that being said, man, I'm your tour guy around the on around the swag Sewell signing out, and I'm gonna catch y'all on the rebound. Peace.